Hey, this is Christopher Williams uh, from San Francisco Art Institute. I'm here with alumni Mike Henderson, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of an interview, and uh, we're in the studio with Mike Henderson. And, uh, well, sir, um, can you uh, tell me how you got to San Francisco Art Institute and, uh, and where you're from? Okay, well, I'm from uh, originally from a little town in Missouri called Marshall, Missouri. Uh -huh. Maybe about 10,000 people and so forth. Grew up in the country, I'm an old country boy. Yes, sir. And um, my dream was always to be an artist. Mm -hmm. That was number one. When I found out that's what it was, because I just loved to draw. And I was fascinated with the guitar. Mm -hmm. The sound of it. I didn't have one. I didn't get a guitar until I was 21. Yeah. So I was sort of an uh, oddball. Really, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And I would carry around a, a drawing pad under my arm, you know. If anybody wanted to ask, for, uh, want to look at drawings, I was willing to show. Just hang out at the barbecue joint. That's mm -hmm. where we'd go. Mm -hmm. Marshall was segregated, you yeah. know, and so forth. When I was growing up, I came to San Francisco because uh, it was the art institute was the first art school that accepted me because all the other art schools were basically segregated. Oh wow. Wow. I would fly to schools and I'd go there mm -hmm. to um, to show up to look around and, and of course they wouldn't talk to me or something. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. we're full or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I would call them later. I learned to call them. <laughs> yeah. I took the bus ride. <laughs> and I thought about San Francisco for two reasons. It was the furthest thing, furthest place from Missouri and still be in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I like the name of it, San Francisco. There was something about that. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, when I applied and I got accepted, I called the school, sort of carefully asking them, you know, well, I'm, 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 I'm black, you know. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and so anyway, the secretaries, there was this pause, and I was waiting for her to say, yeah. we're full or no, or whatever. <laughs> and she said, um, what is it you want to live in a, a, a black neighborhood? And I said, no, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, can I come to the school? Yeah. She said, of course. Oh, <laughs> nice, see? <laughs> <You know? laughs> just like that. Yeah, yeah. I ended up graduating in 1970. Yeah. And I got both of my degrees at the same time. I got accepted in the and the filmmaking, wow. experimental filmmaking part, the second year that. Yeah, year. yeah. So I uh, kept working on the bachelor's in painting, and master's in filmmaking. Wow. I studied filmmaking with Bob Nelson. Bob Nelson, okay, uh, okay. And Bruce McGall was one of my teachers. Norman Stegemeyer was one of my teachers. These were the painting teachers. Yeah. And even. Uh, uh, I used to talk to Jack Jefferson a lot, mm -hmm. Wally Hedrick. J.D. Fell, Joan Brown. No, Joan Brown, yeah. I talked to everybody wow. who was, if I was in their class or not. Yeah. I was, my, I was concerned um, if I could be an artist, mm -hmm. you know, is it in me? If it wasn't, then I was going to uh, uh, go someplace and live on a beach or something. I yeah. wasn't going to work in the fields no more, yeah. wash another dish. Or, mm -hmm any stuff like that. I had this job working at the Viking Hotel with Marshall, where mm -hmm. the famous Jim the Wonder Dog is from. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and I did everything. Janitor work, I did the, uh, you know, uh, bellhop and so forth. And, and one of the things about working at the hotel, it was um, yeah. uh, in the morning we were busy because people were checking out. Yeah. So it ran from about noon to about three or four was sort of slow time, you know, somebody would come in yeah. shoes shine or something. So the woman I worked for, Miss Freeman, they didn't mind me drawing. Because oh. I would sit there. Yeah. And actually one day she came by and she says, Oh, I think I'll start drawing. So she drew she bought a set of things <laughs> too. So we would um she would be over behind her desk yeah. and you know, with her paints and I would be over at the shoe shop stand, which was my easel. Yeah. And uh, there was a Coke machine there, and I used to hang my drawings and hangs up on the wall. And uh, one day, 
uh, this guy came in and said, uh, uh, you ought to do something with that. Why are you just doing this? Yeah. He said, next time he came through, he said, are you still here? And I said, yeah. He says, here, I'm going to help you. Yeah. So he said, buy this book. He told me buy a book called um, Thank and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Hmm. And every place where Napoleon Hill would mention being successful with money, mm -hmm. I would substitute the word art instead of money. Oh, wow, okay. So uh, the book became real relevant to me. It became my Bible. And it was full of stories of how uh, uh, inventors and so forth and people who uh, uh, were born with a certain uh, disability or something, how they overcame these challenges that they were facing yes, in life and uh, how they used the challenges they were facing to be advantage for them yeah and so forth so anyway uh, there was that was put me on the path to figuring out what I needed to do mm -hmm. and one of the things I needed to do was go back to high school yeah so I went back to high school when I was 21 cool. oh yeah <laughs> well it sounds like you like you you know, when you when there's a challenge in front of you, you go out and you you achieve it. And then going back to school, and then I heard that you also did uh, experimental films. Yeah, as well. That that came later. Uh huh. I was doing I was doing a lot of painting, and uh, I was lucky enough to get the scholarship to go to Skowhegan for summer school. Oh, nice. Over in Maine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That was incredible. There was Jacob Lawrence teaching there, Philip Perlstein. Oh, wow. Whatever. And when did you pick up the guitar? Like, like have you always just no, been... I didn't get it until I was 21. Okay. And that was really funny, too. The guy who uh, I learned my first guitar chord from was a guy named Galen Swift. Galen Swift, okay. He was much younger than me. And there was, in the, in the town, there was always uh, a... a baseball game between the black team mm -hmm. and the white team. Okay. And and uh, I played, you know, then I got tired of playing because everybody was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> white team baseball. cheated, black team cheated, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, people would hide the ball under their arm. Yeah. Okay, stop, <laughs> you know, whatever. You know. Yeah. So I found out that you could get Two dollars and fifty cents if you umpire the game. Mm, if you okay. umpire the game, both people are gonna hate you. <laughs> 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 Everybody's booing me. <laughs> As I'm coming back to the, there's this guy who comes up in the car, pulls up to me, and this guy with this bright red hair and tons of freckles and his glasses. I walked on ahead, and he followed me behind in his car. And he says, you want to ride? I said, no, I don't want to ride. Just leave me the hell alone, yeah. you know? He keeps following me. Then he says, hey, I know what you want to know. Mm -hmm. And that stopped me. And I said, what is that? Yeah. He says, I know you want to learn to play the guitar. I can teach you. Oh, wow. And I got in the car. We've been friends ever since. Oh. I will say this. My family was not encouraging in terms of uh, mm -hmm. studying art, you know. Yeah. Now, now that, that's interesting that you brought that up because I, I heard about that because uh, you, you said in an interview uh, with the Haynes Gallery that um, it's either you were to work in the chicken factory yep. um, or join the army or work at the shoe factory. Yeah. That was and that the, was the only options. Those were the options that, you know, if you want to be like everybody else. Yeah. I was, I was born very... Dyslexic. I was, oh, you know, okay. I mean, <laughs> things go sideways some days. Some days it's good days and yeah. bad days. Depends wow. on how my eyes are. But anyway, yeah. Um, that was something I was ashamed of for a long time, you know. Um, because, you know, you consider dumb. Mm. You know? Yeah. And I knew that, uh, you know, I wasn't dumb. That was something that was also uh, a driving point in me, you mm -hmm. know, because I remember how people who were born with disabilities, there wasn't a word for dyslexic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either you're dumb or you're smart. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. 
that that's that's, that's a hardship to go to, uh, to face. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now that that brings me into like with your past experiences, and uh, like you know fighting dyslexia, you know, and uh, you know moving from Marshall. How did that like? How did you put all that in your artwork? How how did that influence your artwork? I I don't know. I'm still trying to find that out. That's something I'll never know. Because there's a reason why we got a blind spot, no eyes in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. And there's a blind spot with that, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't really focus on it, you know. Yeah. I don't really look for why anymore. Mm. I just look for, you know, what is it I can do now? Yeah. If I can be uh, better at anything I do from being a parent or a husband or mm -hmm. a painter or just another human being or yeah. whatever, that's what I'm focused on. Yes, you sir. Know? And how it all fits together, that's for historians. Nice. You know? <laughs> I like how you put that. You yeah, know? yeah, there's yeah, just, yeah. There's just, I, I, I'm, you know, it's sort of like, uh, it's like when you're playing music. If you're thinking about the notes you're about to play, uh -huh. it's too late. You missed it. Nice, yeah. It has to be spontaneous, muscle member. Same way with painting. Mm -hmm. You have to be in that zone. Yeah. When I when I uh, did this painting mm -hmm. of me playing the guitar. Yes. That's in the show. It has mailman on. Uh -huh. I like that. <laughs> that that is. I had this friend. Mm -hmm. We grew up together. Lived down the streets. Our parents were friends. His name was Melvin Smith. Mm -hmm. And uh, he joined the Green Berets. Oh, okay. He became a second lieutenant in war. He went to the OCS. He uh, he gave me that T-shirt. Oh, okay. And I was wearing it in support of him, hoping that he'd come back alive. Wow. And uh, then I was hanging out at Hate Street. I'd go to the Fillmore to concerts and all that stuff. Cause he had all these different bands. Mm -hmm. And so forth. I got to see all my heroes, Sun House, uh -huh. Lightning Hopkins. Got to play a deal with Lightning Hopkins, Money right. Waters, BB King. Oh wow, Money Waters, the Queen, yeah, yeah, Freddie, Freddie King, King yeah. Bo Diddley, you name it. The Doors, every rock band there ever was. Wow. Um, music was a big part. So when I grew up on Hate Street, and there was always demonstrations mm -hmm. going on, and so forth. Huh? On a Saturday, I'd go up there on the Saturday and Sundays. So one day there was this demonstration, and the cops were just whooping the hell out of everybody. <laughs> oh, wow. So I came back that Monday and I did a painting of it. Mm. And then that's when the that's when the, the political stuff began to develop. Then I began to think more about the civil rights stuff. Yeah. Dr. King was assassinated. Yeah. And uh, I um, went down to the Civic Center to hear the speeches and so forth. And when I kept back to the Institute, I was walking back, and I just kept thinking about my painting. Like, oh God, I want to, I gotta get, I want more movement, or more something. I want my paintings to be stronger, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I want to make people realize uh, being pulled into the painting and just drawing mm -hmm. and getting lost in it had to do with. You had to be interested in something. Yes. You know, there's yes. This boom. But well, yeah. you're thinking too much about it, does that look like a hip? Does mm -hmm. that look like the person who mm -hmm. she is or, yeah. or whatever? None of this was in the play. It was, it was the first film I made was The Last Supper. Mm -hmm. Because to me, I always felt that religion, Christian religion, was the biggest um, handicap of brainwashing to, to uh, blacks. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. The religion was taken away from when they came here, whatever that yeah. was or whatever. You know, just like blues when they say that it's the devil's music. <laughs> yeah, the devil's, devil's music. It's yeah, Christianity yeah. saying that. Mm -hmm. At the time that I noticed that, okay, that's really, uh, blacks are doing it, it's going to be labeled negative. Yeah. So. Uh, what you're telling me about seeing silver, you, you, uh, like you look yeah. at me, and that, mm -hmm. that was really inspiring. I love that. So uh, if if you can please, yeah. Okay, I had did the I did the, uh, like I said again this whole thing with silver making the world s simpler place to live yeah. and, and harmonious and all this stuff. Yeah. But anyway, um, I uh, 
doing, doing the vacations, mm -hmm. I think it was maybe Christmas or something like that, mm -hmm. I stayed out here and uh, I took over the grad studio mm -hmm. and I stretched up uh, 15 canvases. Uh, they were about 10 feet high yeah. and about six feet wide. And I put them in the room and I did this one long painting. Yeah. It was all silver. Oh, nice. Anyway, so silver was the thing. Anyway, I was there one night after the opening there and J.D. Phil's class, mm -hmm. night school class was going on. So I clean up her classroom, and and when she, she would um, she would uh, she would I would she would be around for me to ask questions, and each time she came and so mm -hmm. forth. So this particular night, I was telling about my silver phase and so forth, and how I could make the world silver. And I showed her my painting I was working on that and finished it. Then. And we went down to the cafeteria. Yeah. Uh -huh. Painted this. Tables and chairs and cafeteria silver. Nice. <laughs> then we got outside and they painted the front doors of the school silver. That is awesome. And, uh, and you know, I, I was I was feeling like um, I don't know, like um, Rubens or whatever. <laughs> you know, doing my cape around me. <laughs> now I'm gonna, now I'm going to walk back to the mission a little on Fifteenth and Full. Uh huh. Uh huh. So uh, walking back, and I'm feeling like I accomplished something. So anyway, next morning I got to be at school because I want to make this crew, make sure everything's cleaned up. Yeah. So I get to the bottom of the hill down about Bimbo's, uh -huh. and I see all this commotion in front of the school with uh -huh. Fred Martin and some other students and so forth. Yeah. And as I get close, I see J.D. Phil there. Uh huh. And all of a sudden it dawned on me what I did. Oh. <laughs> She's got a checkbook out and she's oh. close and she wants to pay the friends no no no, 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, and by the time I, I'm, so I start walking slower, boys, yeah. slower and slower, <laughs> you know. That's awesome. You know. <laughs> so as I get close to the sc mm -hmm. school, you know, and uh, they got some students out there cleaning the paint off the doors. Oh, no, that's and funny. Painting them and so forth, scraping it. And um, nothing, Fred never said a thing. Oh, see, you know, that's awesome. And I got down to the cafeteria. Yeah. <laughs> and everything had been painted to clean off the juice, but there was this one section that was left. Uh huh. That was silver, salt shakers, everything on it. <laughs> so you know, the wall around it. And, yeah, yeah. And so forth. And, um,. I'll never forget that, but I, I remember coming up the hill. Th oh my God, this is what, what we do. <laughs> yeah. But I guess she told Fred about uh, this, this, you know, this crazy idea about silver people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I really believe that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, if, if if the world believed that, we would have a lot less violence. Yes, and I, and yes, I think so. Yes. And, and yeah. I, I, because you wouldn't hurt yourself. You yeah, know? that is that is yeah, true. Yeah. Silver. So I'm gonna look at the camera. If the walls get painted silver at the school, it's not me. <laughs> won't be me. It won't be. <laughs> well, Mr. Henderson, I really appreciate this, and this is a big honor. And yeah, you're one of our respected alumni, and um, also uh, September 20th at the Walter McBean, we'll see Professor. Awesome alumni, musician, you name it, painter, filmmaker, Mike Henderson, September 20th from 6 to 8. Uh, come see us. See you later. Just the old country boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that school. I yes. Love that school, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, we I love do you. It man. All over again, man. I do it all over again. Yeah, I, I do it all over again. They, they ever asked me, have you ever met? That's and, what you and, and I was so shocked. I said, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not Harry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got the limousine. Oh, that's awesome. And, uh, 
I knew I wanted to come back here. Yeah, that's what you knew. That's funny. I, had a, I used to shave my head all the time uh -huh. when I was younger. I used to, every summer I either had a bald head, I shaved my head, yeah. or I'd have a mohawk. Oh. You know? that's not, yeah. I, I, I guess I'm copying you. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get, get I got to get this. Uh, I think today I'm, I'm going to do that today. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. back to the story of... Uh,